In the last video I talked about making a genomic library, and in this video I'm going to talk about how an alternative to creating a genomic library, um, which is creating a library that consists only of DNA sequences that are transcribed into mRNA, which is called a cDNA library, and that's because uh, the DNA library is complementary to mRNA. Um, much of the eukaryotic DNA consists of repetitive and other DNA sequences that are actually not even transcribed into mRNA. So these sequences um, won't be represented in this library because it's not transcribed. So this type of library has two advantages that the full genomic library doesn't have. And the first one is that it's enriched with fragments from actively transcribed genes. Um, second is that introns do not interrupt the clone sequences because introns would pose a problem when the goal is to produce eukaryotic protein and bacteria because bacteria don't have the means to remove introns because bacterial uh, DNA, they do not contain introns. So uh, just give, if you don't know what an intron is, you can either look it up or I'll just show you a little thing. Let's pretend that this is your sequence of DNA right here. And we have three different colors like this. Okay, so right here, let's say that this is an exon this is an exon and this is an exon, so one, two, three exons, and then one, two introns. These two introns in DNA, when it's being transcribed from, so you have a pre-mRNA, it's just a pre-messenger uh, pre RNA before it becomes a mature uh, messenger RNA in eukaryotic cells. So this intron will be removed through a variety of mechanisms, which I will discuss in another video if I haven't already. And then these three exons would be um, fused together by ligase, and these introns would not be included in the mRNA. So bacteria don't have the means to remove these introns, so they cannot obviously, um, you cannot include them into the DNA library when you're, when you're injecting them or fusing them into bacterial cells, so that is why the cDNA library is um, an advantage. Um, the disadvantage would be that it contains only sequences that are present in mature mRNA, so sometimes researchers would be interested in the promoter region or the enhancers, um, which wouldn't be present in the mRNA. Um, another one is that a cDNA library contains only those gene sequences that are expressed in the tissue from which the RNA was isolated. And the frequency of particular DNA sequence in a cDNA library depends on the abundance of the corresponding mRNA in the given tissue. So let's say a gene is not expressed, or is it expressed only at like a low frequency or something in a particular tissue, it may be absent in the cDNA library um, that's prepared from that tissue. So in contrast to that, almost all genes are present at the same frequency in a genomic DNA library. So I'm just going to give the um, general process to creating a cDNA library here. So right here we have what is called an elution column. So it's a special column that contains only short oligo DT chains linked to a cellulose. So right here you can see that this is your DNA DT chain right there. Um, down here we'd have a bunch of A's. So let's draw A, 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 A. So the mRNAs have poly A tails obviously. Uh, so total cellular RNA is isolated from the cells and passed through this column. Um, down here, the poly A tails uh, of the mRNA molecules pair with the oligo DT ch uh, chains and the mRNA is retained in this column. So they would be in this column. Um, the rest of the RNA would just be passed through. So right here, the rest of the RNA is just being passed through and not included in the column. Down here, once again, you have the column. So you would end up letting this drip down into these, which would be uh, the only poly A tails down here. Then we would move up to here, where we have your DNA, or your mRNA, sorry. So this is mRNA. mRNA. Um, so the oligo DT primers are added right here. Let's draw that. So right here, just draw arrows all the way down. And right here, the chain of T is added into there. Uh, so these primers are added uh, and they anneal to the poly A tails of the mRNA and provide three prime uh, hydroxide groups for DNA synthesis, which is right here. So you'd have a five prime, yeah, five prime end and a three prime end right here. And then the rest is not included there. 
Um, then you would add reverse transcriptase and DNTPs. So I'm just going to put RT and DNTPs. Um, so the reverse transcriptase um, will synthesize a DNA strand by using the mRNA as a template. So as you can see here, this is the newly synthesized strand uh, that is being synthesized in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Once again, this is the 5' prime strand and this is the 3' prime strand. Um, the RNA to RNA, uh, RNA to DNA hybrid molecule is briefly treated with an RNA ace. So right here, you'd have an RN or an RN, RNA ace just a RNA degrading enzyme, which will um, digest part of the RNA strand. As you can see here, the top of the RNA strand is digested. Down here, you would then add a DNA polymerase. So let's do a little blue DNA polymerase here. Say this is it. And you add that in here. So let's label this DNA poly. Um, so it is added to, uh, it's used to synthesize obviously the second DNA strand by using the short undigested RNA pieces as primers. So this looks much like replication where you have this little primer here um, and the DNA will come in, DNA polymerase uh, 3 would come in and then DNA polymerase 1 would remove these primers if this was replication, but it's not. Um, so the DNA synthesizes these strands and we'll just draw a couple of them here. So these are the newly synthesized strands. Then you would add a DNA ligase in. So a little ligase, I should probably shouldn't do that in green. Let's do it in red. So your DNA ligase is added in. And we'll label it here. Ligase is added in. So the nicks and the sugar phosphate backbone are sealed. And there you have it. There is your new uh, DNA strand right there. So that is the completed product. And that is how you make a cDNA library.